Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Aged Out Reacts with the two hosts of the Aged Out Podcast, Mike Fantini and Evan Worrell. And today is our last video we're going to record. Probably the, this will be the fourth one that goes up of our, to close out our independent world percussion WGI 2023. <sighs> it's a mouthful, I got it all. Um, coverage for this season, for independent world at least. Uh, before we get into the thesis here, go... Check out the podcast on podcast services, Facebook, Instagram, Aged Out Podcast. Comment, like, subscribe. Let us know if we're dumb, we're smart, you hate us, you love us. You know, it is what it is. We love everybody. The thumbs down still helps the algorithm for those that don't know. Uh, E-L-E. Was that, was that from uh, uh, Tropic Thunder? E-L-E. Everyone love everyone. <laughs> everybody love everybody. Hit the join button for 99 cents a month. Support us financially. Uh, it all helps. But the viewership the viewership helps us all the same. And we appreciate it above everything else. So, Thesis, unfortunately, if you didn't know, this video is not from finals. We will own up to that. Because I feel like what happened was everyone kind of assumed they were going to make semis. So, so wasn't worried about getting footage of them on prelims day. And then they got a penalty. Should have made, should have made semis. Had the score to get in. Uh, unfortunately, due to what I believe I saw was a prop malfunction, had a timing yeah. penalty, which sucks. Sucks. But sucks real bad. We uh, wanted to we wanted to give them some love. Yeah, we, we so. were planning on reacting to them anyway, uh, so we're still going to do it no matter what. We liked them a lot. I thought they came a long way from beginning of season to end of season, which is always fun to watch the progression of a group like that. Um, but yeah, they would have made semis. Um, there is their prelims run on YouTube on the floor. So you can go watch that. I recommend doing it. I liked their show. Uh, I watched their prelims run on the stream from my house before we went up on semis day. But let's get into this. Let's watch what the battery's doing. I don't think there's any front in this video, but go subscribe to Drumline Archives. Uh, great channel. With one of the coolest intros. Yeah, I was going to say this intro is classic. I was talking to a kid in lessons the other day about vinyls, and he was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, God. That just makes me sad. <laughs> vinyls and CDs. Drums are crispy. Yeah. Not trying to hide anything. Exposed. Good job handling that move and changing listening environment, too, as you play that role. They did a good job on this show of using the color palette. 100%. Highlighting sections. I mean, it's the idea that kind of Gone and X did the same thing in 08. Right, right. It was right. kind of the trendsetter of using two colors like this. And... Ooh, nice. Obviously more of a texture from the quads there than a... Yeah. As they turn back, more backfield. Good Dude, triplets by the line. symbols. Yeah. Very accurate rhythms. Dude, I like the way these snare drums sound. I'm not going to lie. Well, they're pearls, so. There, uh, I wonder why. There you go. A little full battery blend issue there. Low end sounds good, though. Yeah. Good stick control. Really good. I'll give this slightly more grace since they're like two weeks out from like finals at this point, I guess. Uh, I think it's one week. Or maybe one week. Was NCP this SCPA? NCPA. NCPA. Okay. I don't know how that lines up with the season, but. It's, this was the weekend before finals weekend. So it's one week okay. before finals. So okay. they probably left for Dayton like two days after this. Gotcha. Three days, something like that. I take my Mm, nice shaping. I like the tuning of the whole battery, honestly. It's just easy to read. It's articulate. A lot of space in this bass moment. Good end of the phrase. I think they felt that space where they raise their sticks up and pause, like no vocals, honestly. I didn't hear any kind of like dut. There might have been one person with doing it softly or something, but it was the pretty grunts. good too. Uh, uh. Yeah, some grunts or something like that. 
Good roll. Hmm. Pretty solid phrase overall. A couple, just a couple minor things on like those seven strokes. Isolated double strokes were good. Man, there's a lot of dynamic contrast in the baseline. They, the whole battery, the writing of the entire book is extremely dynamic. And it kind of coincides with that. You notice they're turning around and turning back around a ton. Right. If you've seen their show, they do that a ton. The blue, orange color palette, you know, makes sense visually from that standpoint. But it's... It's really cool the way they arranged that same concept with crescendo, day crescendo moments, loud, soft, and the dichotomy. Their loud is very loud, and their soft is so soft. There was a phrase the snares played a minute or so ago. I, I was waiting for a pause to comment on it, but they were at the edge really low. Like If you watch, look really closely at some of the snare drummer's hands while they're doing that, just one and a half inches off the drum. And the stick control was there, and it was crispy, so... It's good stuff. I appreciate some low end stick control. It's really hard to do, and I feel like overlooked a lot in the activity nowadays. What are tap heights? Yeah. A lot of groups have forgotten. But like even that, and that's. Ooh, nice. I'm, I've watched them multiple times. The dynamic contrast yeah. they play with is refreshing compared to what a lot of groups, drum corps and indoor nowadays, play with. Those low, that like three at the end was just like in there. It's just tasty. Their whole overall battery sound is pleasing to the ear. Like when they have the more vertical moments. And seven snares. Oh, wait a second. It works. But the phrase finish. Woo! Woo! That PDD roll was good. Nice. That was blended as hell, too. Yeah. It, it wavers a little bit. On some of just like the turn around, like yeah, it's... when you have different people like turning front forward, forward front front facing at different times, like some of the blend is just hard to balance. It's, it's so tough it gets... to maintain that. It takes extreme ear training and just maturity to do that, and they do it pretty yeah. well, despite that the difficulty. Yeah. I mean, it's in when... there a lot of the time. I love the tuning scheme of this battery. Like when the basses, quads, snares playing the more vertically written moments, it's just. I mean, credit to the tech staff or whoever's tuning them. And also, again, we're big fans of Pearl Drums on these on this channel. Um, but that's just... I, Shout I out, appreciate, Kevin, guys. Yeah, right. I appreciate <laughs> the way they, they play. I don't think the video's over yet. We have another phrase left here in a second. Yeah. But it's just... It's, it's good. The tuning is good. It just sounds good. Um, yeah, let's keep watching. If somebody wants to send me a Pearl Drum, that'd be great. You know... I have an idea, but <laughs> Kevin guys, right. Kevin guys, call us. <laughs> Hit me up. I'm kind of serious. I actually have an idea. <laughs> we'll talk about it later.
Yeah. I mean, you had some blend issues in rolls, vertical moments there throughout. But I mean, when the clarity's there, it, the clarity's yeah. there. And I watched their I watched their prelims run. It was very very solid. Um, I thought it was good. I texted you after it's good I watched to it. Make, obviously, it's good enough to make semis um, 100% from a score agree. standpoint. Yeah. And I think I said this on the podcast we did for the finals wrap up. Um, and if not, here it is. But even if I did, I don't mind repeating it. But this was a group that was just pretty fun to watch the growth of the ensemble from not only the beginning of this year to the end of this year, but from last year to this year too. Uh, the ensemble membership and just the design team, the tech team, the leaps that they took from last year to this year were pretty cool to watch. Um, I would I'm, imagine there'll be a player in the California scene I'm, in the in the upcoming years. So I'm very excited to see them next season. Like you said, the jump from last year to this year was insane honestly to go from they were open last year right i believe so and then basically yeah, make yeah, sem- yeah. and then essentially make semifinals your first year in world is a huge accomplishment accomplishment in today's circuit and activity and all right you mentioned it seven snares all right here's what <laughs> i want to see for anyone that gives a crap about anything we have to say i want to see five <laughs> independent world ensembles next year go seven four five and like five symbols or something go smaller and I bet you have a good season. Seven four five is a great. The balance blend. is a great blend, especially snare to quad or eight five five. But yeah, obviously, that works too. Five, that works obviously, too. five quads is is hefty. Um, so seven four five. Yeah, I want to see five groups do it. <laughs> and stop trying to write books like you're try like you're a medalist group. Slow and steady <laughs> wins the race. Tortoise in the hair, man. It's, it's, Uh, clarity is king. Again, look at I2. Clarity competes. Clarity competes. That's the podcast motto. I'm going to have it like in small little letters in the top of all the videos. (laughs) Clarity competes. So. All right. This was blast. This was our last independent world video. I was a fan of thesis most of the year. Loved watching their progress. You said the same thing. The battery tuning scene was great. Very dynamic drum line. Um, yeah, we'll be back in very soon with some independent open videos, some scholastic world videos, uh, should be coming up, coming out pretty soon after this one releases, um, like comment, subscribe on YouTube, join, become a member, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Patreon. We will see everybody in the next one. Peace.